The quickest way to describe it is as a, a measurement science and an information management art. So uh, most of the spatial sector has its roots in land administration, uh, in the surveying and, and registration of, of land and, and the ownership and titling to land. 20 years ago our organisations organizations would have been considered to be mapping organisations. The digitisation or the digital era has come along and what we were doing to prepare those and make those maps manually became digital. Uh, and we were still producing the maps. But then people came along and said, hey, actually, that digital data is actually pretty handy and we can use that for a whole bunch of other things. So suddenly the digital data has become as important as the mapping uh, outputs that came before it. And of course, um, as we've moved into the, into the very modern age of the digital economy, uh, we're now moving into services as well as providing data. We produce, for example, elevation data, and hydrographic data that's used by the construction, planning and infrastructure provisioning um, bodies of the state. Uh, we produce administrative boundaries, so the, the electorates, the local government boundaries, the suburb boundaries, all of those things that make our world tick over. It is um, significant and it's growing, as you say, exponentially. But if you think about, uh, we have around about 200 data sets clustered in about 10 themes, um, and they have to be maintained in sync with each other. So for example, if we pr improve our elevation data, which we're doing at the moment, uh, significantly improving the elevation data for the state, uh, then we have to look at the hydrography, the water features, and we have to adjust and modify the water features because the water's got to flow downhill. And if you move the water feature, then you've got to move the bridge, and if you move the bridge, you've got to move the road. So we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of of spatial objects recorded in these databases that need to be kept in sync. The other part of it is a little bit more technical but also interesting in, in the sense that we have a geodetic model of the Earth's surface that we need to keep in, in track to keep everything coordinated and together. But we're moving northeast at about seven and a half centimetres a year uh, with continental drift. So we have quite sophisticated models that, that allow for and adjust as we go along, which means that all of those hundreds of millions of objects uh, need to be shifted as, as the continent shifts in relationship to the rest of the world. So it is difficult. Um, we are moving uh, very rapidly into the cloud. The welcome thing for us is that all of our data is open data, so um, security is not as great a concern as it might be for other parts of government. Um, so uh, moving into the cloud and taking advantage of that very scalable, reliable storage uh, and, and delivery channels has been uh, one of the ways that we've been able to uh, step up to this increased load. From our perspective, the, the two major drivers are Earth observation, so that's satellite imagery, uh, and it's becoming increasingly accurate and, and, and more detailed, and of course the Internet of Things. Um, so those, those two things all, all have a spatial component. And we see, for example, that the, the, the really key issue is that if you have a good positioning service, if you can locate something very precisely, or you can move something very precisely, then suddenly the way that you locate industries and the way you use land changes. And we see that happening, first of all, in the 70s and 80s with robots in factories, but now you're starting to see autonomous vehicles in the mining industry uh, and agriculture, which are controlled environments where you can get away with that uh, at this stage. But they're the test beds for autonomous vehicles um, to be used by people and for transport and for delivery of goods. So um, logistics and anything to do with moving people or goods around will be radically affected by the availability of high quality uh, positioning services. You know, I wish I was starting my career now because I can see how that step change in order of magnitude of the complexity and richness of data that we're able to provide uh, and the analytics and the simulations and the modeling that we can undertake are so exciting and so uh, so far ahead of what we've been able to do previously uh, that young graduates and people coming into the industry now really are set for a, a, a great career.